charging. Max has got a good one from the outside. Nicky Hayden in the middle of your shot having a good run. Valentino on the outside. There's a Ducati there. It's Lawrence Capo Rossi. Capo Rossi from eight. It's Rossi from Max from... It's Melandri. I take that back, Marco. Marco Melandri from into third. It's Rossi, Biaggi, Melandri, Nicky Hayden. One, two, three, and four. There oh. goes Shaky Burn being pushed a little wide. Dear me, Carlos Checker Mud in the middle of the pack there. They all get through. Sete's Pre nowhere. Sete is nowhere, jo Julian. Seventh. Seventh. He's got a lot of work to do. Even Tamada's got through. Well, um, no Chris Burns, by the way. He didn't make qualifying time. Valentino Rossi leads this Grand Prix from Max Biaggi. It is now from Loris Caparossi. I was right first time. Melandri was just in shot on another shot. Down the hill they go. We're about halfway round the lap. The Proton's getting through cleanly. Up the hill they go through Arabiata 1 and 2 as they go up towards the Scarperia corner. Rossi got the belting start here, didn't he? Well, Biaggi not bad from the back of the second row either. There goes Zaus trying to get around the outside of somebody. Meanwhile, Marco Ooh. Melandri looks to go from fifth to fourth he stays in position there's Kenny Roberts on the lone Suzuki John Hopkins of course injured not in it always getting wild Melandri out wide in the slipstream of Nicky Hayden looks again to the inside doesn't make it's it scrappy in third and it's giving first and second immediately a chance to get the drop on the rest of them <laughs> through this quick chicane it's quick through here yeah. what a start Randy you can see uh, you, you call the tub it's Valentino to get that start uh, set the gym now is right behind Tomato looking to pass uh, trying to get up there, as you said, he got the bad, worst, worst end of the deal there. There's Nicky going around the outside of Loris Caparossi. Melandri's through into third place. As they come onto the home straight for the first time, immediately Max Biaggi has got hold of Valentino Rossi, yeah, but here's power. the horsepower. Watch this for a drag race as the two home favourites go below. Biaggi leads it by, oh, a couple of hundreds. But Biaggi's got the sheer grunt. Oh, look at the battle for third position there. Oh, even Stevens, you nearly touched Michelin to Michelin. That is Nicky Hayden ahead of us. Then on the right-hand side, there is Loris Caparossi with the Ducati. Nicky Hayden got the inside line. This is what it's like. This is where these guys oh, earn their is, money. This is brutal stuff. It's brilliant, oh, this is. On board with Sede Jimmy. Now, look at the Ducati just coming out of there, snaking a bit. Uh, again, Marco Melandri doing a wonderful job. You've got Tamada now in fourth place. Sethi just taking his time. Uh, he's got Checker on his heels, though. He can't take too much time. Oh, he's a long way back, isn't he? Marco Melo. Three Italians. One, two, and three. Tamada in fourth position. We thought that he would be in fourth, but just not quite yet. Tamada is remarkable. Look at the tight line he's holding there compared to Melandri. Now, Tamada's doing that because he's on a different tyre than Max Biaggi. Leading three are on Michelin's, but the guy in fourth on the yellow bike is on Bridgestone. Japanese made Bridgestone tyres, and they work well in the very, very hot conditions that we've got here at Michelin. Sete getting a place. Yes. Up to that'll be so uh, good question. That the the behind Tomata now, or now behind Nicky Hayden, so he's in sixth place and he's got some work to do. We'll have to keep an eye on lap times. I'm not sure where Valentino got Max back, but uh, again, this is what Valentino wants to do. He wants to stretch it out so he doesn't have to deal with too many of those Hondas. Now, we we have all the three of us here in the commentary box have been looking at Valentino Rossi's Yamaha throughout the weekend. It's twitchy, and we've already seen Randy, as you will have seen quicker than anybody, a twitch from the rear end of that leading Gulwaz Yamaha. The Hondas just look a bit more in line. Okay, now. I would assume that Valentino's going to swing off to the left-hand side of the racetrack to try to keep a block. There he does it. And watch Max Biaggi. He's already going by him as they get ready to go. Oh, start finish line. Tomada to third like an absolute bullet. Like in a bullet train. He is indeed. My goodness, but Melandri gets him back on the brakes. Melandri on the red Yamaha. Lead this. He's going to lead this. No, he's not. He's, he's going to get second. He's going to get second right now. Max is, is really not trying to give up that spot, but he had to. And he's going to lose the next one. No, he doesn't. Nicky's uh, now, you saw Marco Melandri going from third place. Now he's down into uh, fourth place and looks like he might be in fifth place. Now he's back into fourth place. Now, Marco Melandri had a problem with his arm pump. His right arm was pumping up and he had no not so much strength in his right hand and slow, slowly but surely I think that's probably going to creep in in this race and he's slowly going to fade back um, it's just a, a, a cramp that he's got uh, and he's trying to work that and work through it but it is a problem for Marco Melandri 
So then, we have got Valentino Rossi leading this motorcycle Grand Prix from Makoto Tamada. Max is in third position. We are on board with Max Biaggi, I would suspect. Yes, that's the brand new Repsol sticker that he's got on that bike. Repsol helping out that team as of after Le Mans. Leading six come over the top of the hill. We've got an American in fifth position. We've got an American commentating with Randy down in the pits. And we've got John Hopkins up here in the commentary box. John Hopkins uh, not riding this weekend after he crashed with uh, Neil Hodgson and Norikabe in Le Mans. I'm sorry to tell you, John, I've just seen your teammate come into the pitch. Terrible luck for the Suzuki, but how are you getting on? Yeah, not too bad. Um, you know, it's a bit disappointing watching this and not being able to ride, but um, be giving it a go next weekend in Barcelona, so it's just pretty much just been a spectator at one of the best GPs there is. You've been helping out trackside, sort of spotting from the side to help out Kenny as well, I understand. Yeah, yeah, I've been going around uh, different corners around the track, and uh, you know, right now the Suzuki's looking really good. Um, it's made a lot of improvements this year, and uh, fuck, he just pulled in, that's a shame. Well, look at this, Tomato's going to lead this one, John. He has got this away and sorted, so uh, I th we might think it's Kurt Curtis Roberts, sorry, in the pits, so good to see, good uh, Good to see that your teammate's still in the race. Yep. So Tamada leads this Grand Prix momentarily, but Valentino got back ahead. Nicky's gone to the back of the pack, so as it all shakes out, it's pretty well uh, even Stevens between the two of them. But it's the man, Randy, that's it's Sete on the move. Yeah, Sete moved up two places right now. He's in fourth place. He got by Melandri and Nicky Hayden there. I hope they show a replay of the uh, the pass that Tamada did going down the straightaway, because that, that little rise at 315 miles an hour. Watch Rossi's front wheel come off the ground. This is at 310 miles an hour. Watch this. 210 oh, miles an hour. Sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. Look, Look at, at that. that. That's incredible to show. Now, John Hopkins up here with the commentary box. You've been used to riding these Bridgestone tires with Suzuki this year. Tamada in seconds on Bridgestone. They're really coming on leaps and bounds. Yeah, I mean, they're just making tons of improvements. Um, you know, Tamada's really going to, you're going to really see him coming on strong towards the end of the race because the durability on the Bridgestones are, are amazing. So, um, I would, you know, I think he's really going to be coming on strong. And the man to watch right now is Sete because he's just coming up and uh, he's been on fire all weekend. Now, Tamada's racing at the front for the first time. He's actually racing with Valentino Rossi for the first time. Uh, you've raced around Tamada. He takes some weird lines. Is he a bit frightening to be around on the racetrack? Yeah, I mean, he, he tends to take a different kind of line. But, um, you know, he's, he's doing all right. Uh, last year here in Mugello, he, uh, he came from the back of the grid and went all the way up to fourth. Yes, he managed to do it. Your countryman Nicky's doing a sterling job here, managing to get the better of Marco Melandri. He's having yeah, a battle, I but think, going a little wide there. Yeah, it looks like they're really just holding each other up right now. They're uh, they're really just going back and forth. Yes, there's a thing about Mugello. You've got to be smooth. You've got to keep the pace. John Hopkins, thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you back on a bike next weekend at uh, Catalonia. Thank you. Again, a wheelie from uh, Valentino Rossi at uh, 210 miles an hour. That's just incredible. Tomato's got the lead and holds it through two and one, Toby. And look at the gap there, just a, just a slight gap of between second and third to Max Biaggi and Sete trailing in fourth. Well, Tamada's managed to hold this one through the wiggly bits. Makoto Tamada leads the Italian Grand Prix. He's hardly even started. to stop you. Suzuki. Michelin Pilot Power. Pure racing ingredients.
Before making an important decision, think it over. Nolan N101. The right choices improve your life. Welcome here back to Mugello. We're on lap eight of 23 here for MotoGP round four of the Italian Grand Prix. Makoto Tamada continues to lead this Grand Prix from Valentino Rossi second. Sete Giba now up to third position. Rossi sticks it through up into first, but Tamada's going to try and go around the outside. That oh. does work. How that's does a, he make it just, work? That was happened in the break, and it's a good, it's almost like a replay of what we saw, but here comes Valentino again trying to stick it underneath him. Now, in the commercial break, this is where he outbroke him, but look at Sete. Now, Sete's in a position to move up. Now we've lost Nicky Hayden from the front running five. He dropped it at this corner last time round. We reckon he's got back in the race. He has got back in the race, but he's lost an enormous amount of time. 30 seconds or so. He's back in 19th. What a shame. So we're going to concentrate on this leading four. So then we've got a Honda. We've got a Yamaha. We've got a Honda on a Honda. But Valentino, Randy, he loses out down the home straight, but he's strong around the corners. Typical Yamaha versus typical Honda. He's got to slow Tamada up. They've just completed the, the third spot split area and that's where Valentino through qualifying was the best uh, you can see him trying to, to get back underneath the Honda but he just can't do it now let's see this home straight Toby because it was a very exciting one just before we came back and we're on board with Sete looking at the rear of the doctors but here we go watch the speed that's real-time speed there from Gibbonau's bike 334 did I see and poor old Valentino Rossi suffers the fate of Yamaha riders over the years in drag races with Honda boys and Max just blocks him off 208 miles an hour live at 208 miles an hour down the home straight and wheeling by six inches as they go over the crest unbelievable stuff look at this racing from Tamada but Julian he's not afraid of leading a race he knows how to lead a race you go back to when he won world superbike races the only man to beat uh, Bayliss and Edwards in that season and before and he led them from the front by a distance he's got form for that he was also when we first saw him in superbike referred to by the Japanese as ah Honda have found their Haga <laughs> in other words he ain't scared of it either because leading a race at Grand Prix and racing Randy with people that with whom you've never raced before is nervous and adrenaline at the same time. No, for sure, Toby. And uh, just looking at these uh, these times, they're back into the 52s right now, but Sete's looking menacing. Uh, they've opened a bit of a gap over uh, Max Biaggi, and uh, that's going to make it even more hard for them to try to close that gap back up because the tires are starting to move around. The fastest man of the race, that I mean, the, that last lap was Alex Barros, so who's only three and a half seconds behind, but he's not in the picture yet. Yeah, whilst we concentrate on these guys, let's have a quick rundown behind the leading four. Julian will keep an eye on the leaders. Fifth is Melandri, but he's three seconds back. Barros, sixth. Edwards, seven. Eight is Arbe. Nine is Kenny Roberts. Ten is Rubens Aus. Eleven, Bayliss. Ahead of Caparossi. Thirteen, Nakano. Fourteenth is Neil Hodgson. Walking wounded. My goodness me, he only ro rode a bicycle on Monday. And as he sent a text message to me, he said, I'm sure I'll be all right with 240 horses underneath me this weekend. Jeremy Moe Williams last point score in 15th racing with Shaky Byrne. Well, Neil can't be that bad. He was moaning at the team and wanted more horsepower last night, so he must That's be feeling like a bit here. better. Man, we were always talking about who's got the fastest Honda. I say it's Tamata. It looks like it, down and, that front straight. I mean, said they couldn't even make a challenge even in the draft situation uh, to it, and it looks like uh, Tamata's able just to get a little bit better drive off that last corner, and that's probably helping matters for that long straight. Now, as we watch this leading quartet, Valentino Rossi at the back of things for the moment. Do you think he's just taking stock, Randy? Just, just, uh, just, just seeing what the others can do because he's tried to lead it. Having said that, no. he takes third. No, he's not sitting there. Toby. Okay. He's, he is, he is on the move. He does not want to let these guys go. Uh, he wants to have a shot at victory still. He's pulling Max back up again through this section. This is where they opened up a gap. Now, Sete seems to be much faster through that section. This is the, the, the split of uh, the third split. And uh, Sete's going to try to go for it in one of these corners. 
Oh, but Valentina's trying to do two in one go and just barges through on the brakes with the Yamaha through the right-hander at Scarperia, then the left. It opens out on the exit here, but there is a bump that can unsettle you. They can use the curbs. They're full of a lot of grip, the curbs here. Freshly painted, very easy to run up to. That's a clear example when Sethe is behind somebody like uh, Tamara, knowing that it's going through a chicane, he can't do nothing about it, and somebody else strikes, and that was Valentino Rossi taking advantage of Sethe just sitting in place. Just a bit further downfield, Bayless has gone past Zao, so the top... Rossi, Rossi, Rossi's going to lead it, Julian. Look at this as we go into <laughs> the Just when you think you can take your eye off it for a millisecond and wait for the end of the straight, that happens. Uh, fourth to first, half a lap. Yeah. Valentino Rossi, no one else. And Tamara, mi mirror signal manoeuvre. <laughs> oh, just, oh, right. oh. The whole group behind us here. Look at Max coming in fourth position. Look at the wobble on from Valentino Rossi as they're hard on the brakes and the Yamaha barges its way through. Tamara seems to leave a bit of a door open. Max gets a bit wide and they're still with 13 laps to go. Split by two tenths. Now watch, hopefully you get a helicopter view because you're going to see the gap open up as they go down the hill. Valentino through, this is a short straight and then they're going to go through this left right. Then we've seen him go down just before Arabiata won, that right-hander, the left-hander, where he made the passes on Tamara. This is where his section times are very, very quick. The lone Suzuki of Kenny Roberts has retired now. It's pulled into the pit. So uh, your prediction has come true. Well, it wasn't a prediction. It was a mistake that I said to his teammate, John Hopkins, up here in the box that he'd retired. But Curtis, his brother, had retired. So then, leading Valentino Rossi, going up the hill. Arabiata won. 100 miles an hour and sliding the rear tyre. 120 mid-corner. There is Kenny Jr., the 2000 world champion, retires off the V4 Suzuki, run by the British-based team. The lone bike in that garage this week weekend after John Hopkins was not able to ride after breaking his thumb last time out at Le Mans. Looks like Max is having a bit of trouble running this pace now, doesn't it, Randy? Yes, he uh, he's lost a little bit of that toe that he had with, when he was running around with Valentino. And let me tell you, Valentino's pushed it very, very hard. You saw the bike sliding around a little bit more because he's adding the pressure. He wants to get these guys away from him. He had three Hondas in front of him. Now he's got nobody in front of him. He's going to put some hard laps together to try to string them out. So we're watching the leading four. Don't forget Barros and Melandri. They're still about 2-8 behind. They're hovering around that sort of time difference between the four and then the two of them. Now onto the home straight. Yamaha leads from the Tamada Honda. They're building speed about 210 miles an hour. This 1.1 kilometer Mugello home straight, back 0.7 of a mile, really getting them into top gear. And as always, the Yamaha of Rossi barges up on the inside cleanly, actually places No himself. problem, but Tamada led over the line yes if it comes to a drag race out of the last corner Michelin leading Bridgestone in second place what a variety we have got here it really is the coming tyre manufacturer of Bridgestone everybody has had their day in the past but now Bridgestone are really focusing upon this MotoGP uh, class they're in the position at the moment where their tyres work really really well in some places are awful in a couple of places but as you say it's arriving they certainly are we have got 12 laps to go here at Mugello what a cracking race still to go Whoa. Whoa. In association with Shell Advance for the race against time. I took Welcome back here to Mugello. Valentino Rossi continues to lead this motorcycle Grand Prix just ahead of Sete Gibbonau. The crowd are going mad on the home straight because the, the big screen has failed. There's Shinya Nakano who's gone down. Shinya Nakano has gone down. And something has, something has exploded on the home straight. Some, oh my goodness tire. me! This is Shinya Nakano who's had a tyre failure or something on tire. the home straight. Tyre failure, too. There's been a tyre failure. We believe on the home straight, not for the first time that it's gone down. And poor Shinya Nakano has gone down at over 200 miles an hour and just rolls to a halt. And I hope that he's okay. They put a neck brace on him. The crowd were going mental in front of us and we just took us half a second to work out why. Meanwhile, this race is going to continue. We need the yellow flags out because there's bits of rubber all over the place. Everybody is telling them to do be careful of the rubber. But Rossi leads the race from Sete Gibbonau as they go into lap 14. What you do about Tamada now? Do you bring him in? Well, yeah. Uh, you know. Who knows? 
They have. He's gone. It's up. I think something's happened to Tamada at the end of the home straight. So at a similar position on the racetrack, Julian got it spot on. If that is a tyre problem, this race has completely, and I know joke, exploded in the last lap. It looked like Tamada had a flat front. We need a replay of that. We need a replay of that. Gibbonau leads this Grand Prix from Valentino Rossi. Whilst we're away on commercial break, Gibbonau got up to the back of Rossi, and in the confusion of Nakano and Tamada, Gibbonau leads this race. Well, that's taken the gloss off everything. Uh, I, I can, I, if it, it's a flat front, if I did see it correctly, I would assume Tamada picked up debris from the exploding Kawasaki. Which would have had shards of carbon fibre oh, as well. Shards of everything, Toby. Yes. I mean, the gyroscopic effect of a wheel at that speed is just unthinkable, unthinkable down there. And it's getting darker, and I hope it's not going to rain. Now, there's uh, something oh. for you. Well, so then, Jim and our leads from Rossi from Max Biaggi, Jules. Well, I've never enjoyed the first half of a race so much, and now I feel the gloss has been taken right off it. But let's concentrate on Seti Jim and Al, who is really putting together such a weak end. And so, fair play to the marshals, they're yeah. on the racetrack in front of our commentary box and Randy and they're picking up bits of rubber in, as the race is continuing but between riders, yeah to Randy? Toby, before the start and finish line, the strip where the front row started, there's rubber everywhere so that's where the tyre started to come apart so I would say it's definitely tyre failure from that standpoint it looked like it. We saw it on the head-on replay, Randy. Of that's that's as, as far as I see all, with all the rubber starting from that position. Now, we had a tyre exploding in testing for Kenny Roberts Jr. at Sepang with his Suzuki, and it took out Jeremy McWilliams, who was in close proximity to the 2000 world champion. And, Randy, the worst, worst, worst thing that can happen to you. Well, you're sitting on these bikes at, uh, you know, 205 miles an hour or so as you're heading up this straightaway, and uh, sometimes a tyre will give you a, bit, a fair bit of warning in terms of vibration or chatter, but it always depends on the situation. Uh, and we thought that uh, Michelin, I mean that Brickstone, sorry, had that uh, that covered uh, from the, uh, the crash that Kenny Roberts did back in um, early March. Yes, indeed. I mean, oh, uh, I, oh I, I and Rossi to the front. Rossi to the front. Okay, I just, I mean, I just saw the hugest bits of tire fly up in the air as these guys are racing at 200 miles an hour going to turn one. They're running over the shots. And the, the marshals are doing the best that they can to get all that stuff cleared. Very, very lucky. I hope Shinya is okay. He was moving his arm, as you saw, waving, uh, but they did carry him away, and I'll, I'll try to get an update for you guys. That's a biggie, that is. That's a biggie, that was. I mean, that doesn't come any bigger, does it? They don't. Not at 200 miles an hour. It doesn't, but it's Daytona territory, and that hurts. So then, now, we're on board with Sete Gibanao, a replay of the leader of the championship, two-time winner so far this year, taking the lead ahead of Valentino Rossi, but it's Rossi that now leads we're on lap 15 of 23 we've got eight to go when they cross the line in a moment into this final corner they come peeling it in second gear 75 mile an hour hang it over to the left hand side and then get it on the power Rossi sliding the rear end as we have seen so many times this weekend with that Gulwaz Yamaha and now these two are building up to 200 miles an hour real stuff of heroes and Sete Gibbonau uses that Honda V5 engine to its best effect to get back in front. Will Rossi die for the inside? Of course he will. Now you'll see that Valentino Rossi has got a different helmet design this weekend. He's got a wooden crash helmet. It's painted with shards of splinters and nuts and bolts to hold the wood together because he's got a wooden metal adorned on the front of his crash helmet. Why? It's got the figure four on it. It's a bit of an Italian joke apparently around here that if you finish fourth, you get the, the wooden spoon, as it were. It's a wooden metal. Yeah. Gold silver bronze wood and that's the joke he's making about his two fourth places in the last two races I would have bet the mortgage on Valentino Rossi not winning here I would probably be living in a tent if what I'm seeing in front of my eyes comes I hope it's true. a big tent because we're all, <laughs> we're all going to be in I it. tell you what this whole pit lane is going to be in there <laughs> Can't you get a... Uh, Thanks Randy that's not just me thank you thank you Can't you get a fifth wheeler or something <laughs> Well, well, well. Rossi it ain't Lee. over till it's over. We got uh, oh, yeah. seven and a half laps to go. 
very, very good race. Very technical what you see. Said they've been able to close up in this area of the racetrack. And, uh, but Valentino, again, from turn one on down to the current, I mean, the uh, Arabiata one and two is just incredibly fast. And the, uh, Yamaha seems to be a bit quicker going into the corners. Just to jump here, Randy, there's a space, as it were, in the racetrack where there's no riders. And the brilliant Mugello marshals have, have, have radioed to the marshals that there is a space for about 40 seconds. And there are marshals continuing to pick up every single little piece, an inch of carbon fiber and broken tire from Shinya Nakano's enormous rear tire blowout at over 200 miles an hour. And now they've obviously vacated the track for the leaders. We complete lap six of 23 here at Mugello. Rossi technically leads from Gibbonau. Now the Honda is good on the brakes, now, the Yamaha is good around the twisty bits. Now said they did a good job, now this time taking the inside, the initiative to go to the inside of Valentino. Now it's uh, going to be interesting to see if at that moment, if said they backed out of the throttle before they crossed the start-finish line, if he had more and not showing his hand. And uh, it'll be interesting to see. Now, Valentino knows that he can stay through this area. He knows how hard he's pushing it. Look at this. Just, look, just, a, look. just a slap oh. back. Look at that, and he's dead oh. with a touch. Knee slider to knee slider as they barge down the hill. And, and we've still got seven laps to go. It pushes Gibbon offline, but Rossi could get him back up the hill. And for the first time, you're seeing Sete looking unsettled on a motorbike. It's Mike looking unsettled, and it's being forced to do things it really doesn't want to do. We were on commercial break a few moments ago, and there were some passing manoeuvres with the now-retired Makoto Tamada, and Randy said, how does he do that? And to hear that come from Randy is something else. The confidence they've got in these bikes as Rossi he takes the lead is unbelievable remember Czech Republic last year gloves off no tactics fight this is what you've got the same two but this time they're on different bikes <laughs> the first half of the race may have been about tactics about race pace about thinking about things about planning this is about nothing apart from if the bloke comes past you you adopt the Baelish tactic which means at the next corner you thump straight back past him okay set they seen now exactly what uh, Rossi can do barging his way through and uh, you, you never know what's panning out. Here's a here's a good shot of the um, them touching right here. In, incredible, uh, you know, control between both guys, and for Seth they to still be able to keep a line, so to speak, through that part of the racetrack. Over the line we go, six to go, and it's the sun's gone in. I hope it doesn't rain, we're going to have everything today otherwise. 323 kilometres an hour, 333 kilometres an hour. That's 207 miles an hour down the home straight for Max Biaggi, who's in third. Barros is coming in fourth position. Melandri's dropped back, he's in real trouble with his physical uh, stability of his arms, that arm pump that Randy was talking about on the grid. You just can't hold on to the bike anymore. You can't feel the handlebars, the handlebar on your right side. These are these great shots Toby from the helicopter this weekend it's just fantastic and you'll be able to get, see a good shot of Valentino just there doing a wheelie sliding coming out of the corner he's really pushing it, he does not want this Honda in front of him and Max Biaggi, let's not forget, it's only 1.7 seconds behind Seti Jiba now. That's what the screens gave us last time round. But I go with you, Tabby. It's Barros who's been working stealthily away at the gap uh, between Biaggi and himself. Just caught him in the background there. And that's a possibility that Alex could be on for a rostrum. He was the man who won here in 2001 when it was terrible wet conditions. He's won races on the V5. First time out, in fact, on the V5. That was at the back end of 2002. Nakai update. Rider conscious in the medical centre, no serious injuries. He'll be very, very black and blue in the morning. But that is one of the most terrifying incidents I've ever seen. And the trouble with working in this paddock is that when you get to know people, it gets emotional. Uh, right then. If you'd never met the bloke in your life, you'd still be <laughs> yeah. offering a prayer up for him, having seen that on the television. OK, this whole lap, Sethi's got a great view of, uh, of how hard Valentino's been pushing it. And uh, Sethi's got to match the exit speed, and he's going to be testing what his Honda's like coming out of here to see when they get to the start finish line now whether or not he shows his hand is yet to be seen I don't think he's showing it I was about to say Randy that I, I was about to ask you I think Seto is he's rehearsing not, he's not showing it but the problem there is we do not know the, the potential of uh, of uh, v Valentino on that last lap we've never seen him have to push it that much harder maybe we did in South Africa with Max Biaggi
There was Makoto Tamada in the garage. It's raining. I reckon it's raining, Randy. I don't know where you are. Did I see a spot come past? It's raining. It's raining. It's raining. So we're going to have to stop this race, and we're going to have a clean race with the positions from a clean race start. I did see a spot. I don't know Red where you flag. are, Randy. Red flag. Red flag. It is rainy. I did say that it was getting dark. So we've stopped this race. Seto's not happy. You can't race with these tyres in wet conditions. End of story. You. What we're going to do now, we're going to take to the climb in this interrupted Italian Motorcycle Grand Prix round four of 2004. Jeremy McWilliams has taken a wild card. Has he, Randy, he's from pit lane? He's got full wets on, guys, front and rear. Jeremy McWilliams has been on the podium here before. That was in 2000 with, again, the Aprilia. So then, whatever has happened so far in our previous 17 laps doesn't matter. We've got Rossi and Gibernau and Max Biaggi on the pole position. Go! What a brilliant start from Norik Arbe from the third, third row of the grid. Norik Abe with the Gulwaz Yamaha barging through. It looks like Zaus is up there as well. They're coming up to the corner where it could be raining. Oh, I, believe it is, I believe it is raining. Look, they're hardly laying it into the corner. It's pouring with rain. We're not going to stop the race. We have been told if it rains. They're all on slick tars except Jeremy McWilliams who will appear into a shot in a minute. And Norik Abe leads the Grand Prix. We're on board. You can listen to the engine revs. They're hardly opening it. Arbe leads from Max, from Valentino, from Barros, from Sete Gibernau. It's completely thrown it into the air and it's not yet landed. This is going to be very, very difficult indeed. Arbe, nothing at all to lose. Alex Barros looks at the inside of Rossi, thinks the better of it. There's Melandri. Now, Barros is, uh, Bayliss is positioned well with the Ducati. He started from sixth position, but he will be wary of what happened to him at Jerez when he fell a couple of laps into the race. Oh, dear me. Alex Barros making progress. Sete passing Valentino Rossi up the hill to Corantayo. It's dry here. Rossi's just gone back two places in two corners. So, Arbe leads from Max Biaggi, from Alex Barros, former winner here, from Sete Gibernau fourth, from Valentino Rossi fifth. And everybody will be nervous. My goodness me. What a conundrum. That's a good word for it, Toby. And Rossi, Rossi takes the position back. Fourth place, back to Rossi. Goes in front of Gibernau. You're riding with Gibernau. Now, all of these front runners are on a slick front tyre and a slick rear tyre. No tread at all. Jeremy McWilliams is on a full wet setup. He's taken a punt with the Aprilia. The Belfast rider is in there somewhere. Okay, in the pit He's got the back of the pitch. In the pit lane, it's not raining here anymore. Or, or very, very little. Very, very little. Now, they're just railing Tomato's bike. They're reading Tomato's bike. Just to give you an update. They're reading Tomato's bike into the garage. The seat is completely tore up, and they've got a new rear tire on it. So it did come apart. The rear tire did come apart. Leading this Grand Prix goes Max Biaggi as they charge up to the first corner where it is more wet than dry. Biaggi leads on the yellow Honda. It's Alex Barros in second position. His teammate, Nicky Hayden. That oh. was probably Marco Melandri. Uh, going wide into San Donato. Biaggi leads. Then it's going to be Sete Gibernau looking to get up into second position, but holding third. Look at Troy. Troy Bayliss barging his way through. The former leader of this Grand Prix. He's got absolutely Look nothing rain, to lose. Kirby. It's really raining back there. That is throwing it down. But Troy Bayliss, and there's Rubens out. Did you listen to me on the grid? He's gone fourth, Julian. He's absolutely listening to you. He's on... Eurosport FM. <laughs> Barros leads this race from Sete Gibernau second, from Troy Bellis in fourth, from Zaus in fourth position on last year's Duke. Okay, Toby, I'm standing in and put it this way. The BMW uh, uh, 6 Series came in with the wipers going on. It's raining really, you know, steaming straight down. Straight down. You can see it starting to form on the racetrack. Very, very dangerous. Zaus leads the Grand Prix as he comes up the hill on the number 11, Dantine Ducati. If they haven't got a sponsor, they will in a minute. Barros. <laughs> comes up on the inside. Look at this, it's like the first lap. Oh, we nearly go at the back of Alex That's Ruben's house. I mean, uh, Ruben doesn't care. Uh, absolutely. Put it that way. You know, you, uh, like I said, look at, look at the water spotting on the screen there. That's a good shot. Look at these guys. They've Ooh. got a tiptoe. It's Troy around the outside. It's pouring down here on the main straight. It's difficult to see the other side of the valley. It's so cloudy now. Zaus has really got nothing to lose. Now, it's not really 
puddly wet at the moment on the surface, but it'll be so distracting for these riders. Because, Randy, w water on your visor is the l is terrifying, isn't it? Yes, it is. And w one, one thing that happens with slick tires is if you do not keep the heat into them, they don't stick to the ground. And uh, that's one thing that the rain tires do so well. we still got four laps to go. When they cross the line now, Ruben Zaus leads the Italian Grand Prix. And the team are saying, slow down when he comes over the start yeah, finish line. because in turn one, they don't know what's going on. Look at the, the ground is forming water. You can see it now. I'm surprised no one's been round down the road, Julian. Well, Ruben's run wide there, I think. Now there is Shaky Byrne in ninth position. Bayless goes to the lead. Bayless goes to the lead. Oh, not for long. This is like the dodgiest days of World Superbike. These two bagging fairings together. On a dodgy day. Alex Bowers looking very smooth in third place. Shaky Byrne into the top ten. Jeremy McWilliams in 15th position, 18 seconds off the leader at the moment. And and Michel Fabrizio in the points again. You can just see Valentino's move packs Mass Biaggi behind... Uh, Sete Jimmer now, who's in fourth place, just coming out of the seat there. Man, I, I, I'm telling you, this is so tiptoe-ish, and, it, and it's it's unbelievable that they're able to stay up in that. Look at how gingerly they're trying to go. But and the only way to know where the limit is, Toby, is to spin it. Shaky bird into seventh. But they're only going 12 seconds a lap slower than hot pace dry. So it, it can be done. The two Ducatis side by side. Um, which one Seth, do they want the Ducati to win? Said they just moved up. Look at Sethi moving up in that area. He got past Barrels and uh, Rubens. Max Biaggi bass pa passed back Valentino. <laughs> Bayliss leads this Grand Prix at the moment from Ruben Zau. No, Ruben Zaus. It's Barros in second position. From oh. Gibbonel third. From Max Biaggi in fourth position. Zaus back in fifth position. Valentino in sixth. But it's going to be fourth as they teeter. It's like ice out there. Please observe seventh place. S. Burn Esquire. Shaky right Burn. with them. Wow, wow the that is so cool. The reigning British Superbike champion on the Aprilia. He hasn't got horsepower, but you don't need it. He's oh, got okay. too much horsepower for this. Here Look at this. He's barging his way through like nothing. He's <laughs> going to be passing Max Biaggi. I'm going to say that again. Round the outside of Max Biaggi. Round the outside of Ruben Zouz. And round the outside of Valentino Rossi soon. <laughs> we'll have to wait for that one. I've given you an invite. <laughs> Bayliss leads this Grand Prix by about a second. They are cheering him on from Ducati. They are cheering him on. There's three laps to go. This is the battle for second position. It's going to be Valentino Valentino Rossi from Max Biaggi, from Sede Gibbonau, from Alex Barros, from Zaus at the back of that shot. Uh, Burn is in there somewhere. Oh, out a bit wide there, but what the hell, Shaky? McWilliams was still waiting for McWilliams to cross the line. He does indeed, but he's in 15th and struggling on the tyres. Wet dries are at... Uh, bleh, intermediates would probably be the best. Well, a cut front and a w would be... Hey, I, just, I just ran down here to talk to Aprilia. He has slick front and rear shaky, so he's doing the same job as these guys. That's what you expect from Shaky Byrne. Valentino Rossi in second place is catching Troy Bayliss. <sighs> Valentino has got into his stride and he's going to be catching Troy Bayliss. And Valentino Rossi doesn't even need it wet or dry. He's leading the Grand Prix. <laughs> Valentino Rossi sides to the front of the Italian Grand Prix. But Bayliss is going to do a Baylissism and he's going to try and get him back, but it doesn't quite work. Oh. We've got two and a half to go, Jules. Hey, of all the bikes you wouldn't want to ride in the wet, the, the Yamaha, given how it's probably right up the top of your list. Okay, standing in the pit lane the track's starting to dry out right here toby no rain falling right here so then rossi leads the race from bayless in second place from jibber now in third position there's no point looking at the timing screens because it changes every corner a little burn in sixth position he just did barros at the top of the hill <laughs> I say, come <laughs> excuse the, the uh, an outbreak of flag waving taking place in this commentary box it is british eurosport and he is a british <laughs> superbike champion out of the seat oh Oh, Rossi putting his foot on the floor. Now there's Shaky Burn going through a shot ahead of the 2001 victor here at Mugello, Alex Barros. And my goodness me, this is going to be our last couple of laps to savour. It's drying out here at Mugello, and the power of the Ducati is going to try and get alongside Valentino Rossi as they cross the line. We've just got six and a half miles to go. It's two laps to go. It's stopped raining. It's going to be drying out. It's a real shootout. It is, but Rossi did lead over the line as well. Rossi leads the race from Bayliss, from Gibbonau, from Max Biaggi, from Zaus. Then there's a bit of a gap back to Barros, Shaky Byrne, Loris Caparossi, and the rest. Shaky's had a moment, I think. 
Whoa. You can see the drag is, is slowly drying out. Even that camera shot showing that it's drying out uh, a little bit better. But turn one was still very dangerous with strips of wet uh, tarmac. And they're still only lapping eight seconds off the pace in a two-minute lap. That is the stuff of the world's best motorcycle rider. Nice. We're on board with Valentino Rossi pulling, pulling, pulling ahead of the rest. Sete's really got to make a challenge now to get past Troy Bayless if he wants to win this Grand Prix. But let me tell you, Valentino with a lap and a half to go, it's going to be hard to beat. Yes, yeah, Sete shaping up uh, as Ruben Zerf looks underneath Max Biaggi and takes him. Fourth position for the Spanish rider on the number 11 Ducati. That's last year's bike. Rubens, Strawbale or Rostrum. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the last of that school of racing. Oh, look at Bayless as he comes over the top of the hill, but it's not quite good him. enough to stop Sete Jibba now coming through, but Bayless is all over him like a kangaroo skin look Charles, at it look at Charles going Charles just Bayless. beats Bayliss up in the corner into third position and he's off to Sete Gibernau Spaniard versus Spaniard nobody in Spain knows who Ruben Zaus is Sete Gibernau is a household name Zaus who yeah. meanwhile Valentino Rossi leads this Grand Prix by about a second or so Randy's right it may well be enough for Valentino because it's not raining it's not going to get any I'm, wetter I'm, I'm sure he's right because it's going to get really messy in this fight for second and third place and Valentino Rossi is cool under pressure we've got one more lap to go this is finally going to be the finish of the Italian motorcycle Grand Prix over the line they go Gibbonau's going to give it everything to keep his second place but the grunt of the Ducati of Troy Bayliss is going to get third position back ahead of Zaus Rossi leads this one by point 0.98 as they stream into first run Max Biaggi takes third position ahead of the Ducati so it's Italian from the Spaniard of Gibbonau from Italian Max Biaggi in third here comes Troy Troy Bayliss back to fourth place Set and not as that Ooh, Ruben listen Sete's not letting him go Sete's slowly trying to keep that back look at this he's slowly eking it back will he have enough time the one thing that Sete has on, uh, in benefit is following Valentino he can see that the track's driving, drying and he's using him as a, as a pace oh. But let me tell you, Valentino's now pushing very, very hard. Yes, that's less than a second between Rossi and Jibba now. Now, we've got a half a lap to go. They're coming down the hill at the moment. Everybody's looking at the big screen. Rossi's got a lot of work to do. Jibba now's got even more. Sete is really riding hard. He's not settled with his second at all. The fight is for third, but the tension Look, is for first and second. They're over the top of the hill at over 100 miles an hour. A blind entry to the corner. Aviating the front wheel goes Valentino Rossi. He's hard on the brakes. It's going to be between these two. Bayliss still in fourth position behind the third place Max Biaggi yellow Honda on the power they go we just got three more corners to go wobbling under acceleration Valentino Rossi he's got it all to do will the power of Gibbonau second place Honda out drag the Yamaha of Rossi onto the home straight it's touch and go the surely not near enough Toby surely not near enough unless he rides these corners like a god he rode them like a god yesterday it's round four of the championship Gibbonau's won two races so far this year will Valentino Rossi be able to get two wins wins out of four races to compete a level pegging with Sete Gibbonau. Valentino Rossi move from Honda to Yamaha and Rossi wins a six lap dash to the finish at Mugello. Rossi wins the race from Gibbonau, from Max Biaggi, from Troy Bayliss, from Zaus who gets fifth position ahead of Barros and Yamaha win two races this year. Shaky Byrne gets 10th position ahead of Neil Hodgson in 11th. Wow, what a finish. Oh, the damn team team underneath me is celebrating like they've won a Grand Prix, and I don't blame them. But Valentino Rossi, uh, Randy said this a season and a half ago to me. We just don't understand how good this bloke is yet. Riding in wet...